Good morning, everybody. Time for Coffee with Rob. If you have your Bible, turn to Romans chapter 8. By the way, I recommend that if you don't know what to read on any given day, read Romans chapter 8. It's a real encouragement to the believer. It talks about the love of God, and specifically this one verse right here. Romans 8 verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Very specific. Where's the condemnation for anybody outside of Christ Jesus? If you're in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. What is that condemnation? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews that it's appointed for man once to die. Now, we're all going to die as a result of Adam's sin, as a result of our sin. We're all going to die a physical death. What this condemnation refers to is the penalty of sin at the judgment. We'll all stand before God. And there's three things that we will stand before God for. What's the judgment for? One is for reward. One is for loss of reward. And one is to see if you will inherit eternal life. If your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you will receive eternal life. If your name is not found written there, according to Revelation uh, 20, verse 14. I think it's 14. Anyway, Revelation 20. If it's not found there, then you will enter the second death. That is a spiritual death, a death that you go to hell forever with the devil to be tormented. If you are in Christ Jesus, you will never enter that second death. Yes, it is appointed once. I love that too, by the way. Um, I think I wrote that down. Hebrews 9.27. It is appointed once for man to die. So therefore, everybody that is born because of the sin of Adam, because we inherited a sin nature, we will all die a physical death once. And the word there is uh apokiami apokiami it's a-p-o-k-e-i-m-a-i and that means we will die once we will be laid away we will be reserved uh and we will be laid up in store basically awaiting for the final judgment where all men will stand before either the bema seat of christ for reward or loss reward or the great white throne judgment where it will be determined whether you go into the second death or heaven. So um, that's what the judges were for three things to reward, loss, reward, or to see if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Therefore, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus, and the word here is catacrima, K A T A K R I M A, the penalty, so there is no condemnation, no catacrima, no penalty or punishment or servitude, or sentence to be handed down to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because if we are in Christ, Jesus Christ took that punishment that we might receive for us. So if you're in him, the punishment has already been taken. The judgment has already been received on the cross. If you're not in him, well, you're awaiting punishment. That's in John 3, 36 as well. So I just want to look at that. Um, that's a short version. If you want to stop there, that's fine. But I want to continue just a little further and read the rest of these verses. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death for what the law was powerless to do. That's key right there. So these are people who are saying, uh, I'm a good person. I've got a lot of good works. I'm going to go to heaven based on my good works. The law, by obeying the law, you cannot be saved. By perfect obedience. Now, if you had perfect obedience, which is never going to happen, by the way, then perhaps you might inherit the kingdom of heaven. But James 2.10 says if you violate the law, even in one point, you're guilty of the entire law. In other words, you're totally condemned because the law could show you what's right and what's wrong, what to do and what not to do. But once you violate the law, the law was powerless to redeem that, that violation and to restore you back to rightness with Jesus Christ or with God. So once you violate the law, the law can condemn you. The evidence against you is you broke it, but it can't do anything to save you. So that's the law of sin and death. If I violate the law, uh, there's condemnation. The wages of sin is death. And so for what the law was powerless to do, Paul writes in Romans 8, it's powerless to save you. And in, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. In other words, everybody's sin, everybody has a sin nature. Everybody's going to violate the law. Once you violate the law, there's no hope for you unless you're in Christ Jesus. So what God did, he realized that. And God says, God did, did um, redeem us by sending his son 
in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met. Now, remember, the law is not abolished. It still exists. It is the rightness of God. It's the perfection of God. Is what This is what he expects from each one of us. If you can do the 613 laws in the Bible and obey them perfectly your whole life, there's a possibility that righteousness will get you into heaven. Nobody's ever done that. There's none righteous, no, not one, Romans 3.10. And to violate the law, you violate all the law. But Jesus didn't abolish the law. He came and fulfilled the law in Matthew 5.17. He says, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law on your behalf. So when we receive him, we receive his rightness, his righteousness. So if we break the law, we ask for forgiveness. He forgives us. He makes us right with God again. And so the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. So uh, that's basically pretty simple. If you violate the law, you've broken it, you're condemned. There's a penalty and that is death. But it's only appointed for man once to die. Every man is going to spirit a physical death. If you experience a, a spiritual death, that belongs to you. Because the remember I said the other day, in Matthew 25, 41, it says that hell was created for the devil and his angels. God has given us a way out, and that way out is through Jesus Christ. There's one name given among men whereby we must be saved, the name Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you deny him, basically you said, okay, hell's fine with me. I'm just going to go ahead and go there. But he says, it's only appointed for man once to die. You don't have to die twice because I've given you my son. And in my son, you're guaranteed you're only going to die once. That's a physical death, not the spiritual death, which is the second death covered in Revelation uh, 20. So if we go to hell, it's our fault, not God's fault. Don't blame him. He did everything he could to save us from that. And so I want to go back to, because some people say, well, how did people get saved in the Old Testament? It's pretty simple. There's several verses, and I'm going to read them because I wrote them all down. Titus 1-2. 1 Corinthians 2 7, Hebrews 4 3, 1 Peter 1 20, Acts 2 23, and Acts 4 28 all say that Jesus Christ was crucified before the world was formed, before the world began. And so, uh, and the second thing is that how do they get saved? Well, even in um, Genesis 6 8, Noah found what in the eyes of the Lord? Grace. Because Jesus was crucified, the plan was set in stone before the world began. There was a possibility in the Old Testament to receive grace. Noah found grace, God's favor. Uh, he had favor in the eyes of God because before time began, God knew that his plan of salvation was coming and Noah found grace. So you can find grace in the eyes of the Lord in the Old Testament. And God doesn't change. Malachi 3.6 says God does not change. So if this plan of salvation was enacted before the world began, it was in effect in the uh, Old Testament. It came to fruition, uh, Galatians 4.4, 4, in a perfect time in the New Testament before the church age began. And the old argument about, well, the thief on the cross, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized, and it was before the church age began. Well, God doesn't change. The plan of salvation was in effect from beginning of time till now and through the church age. And so, therefore, the thief on the cross found grace in the eyes of Jesus Christ before he was baptized. So that argument doesn't hold water with me. So, so Romans 3.23, all have sinned. Uh, all are justified by grace in Romans 3, 24. We're saved through the redemption of Jesus Christ. And in, in uh, Romans 3, 25, it says, God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. So that plan was enacted before time. Jesus Christ was to come and uh, redeem the human race. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord back in Genesis 6, 8. The thief found grace in the eyes of the Lord in Luke 23. And you can find grace and, and be spared from condemnation in Romans 8.1 by being in Christ Jesus, which will spare you from not the first death. You will die. We will all die a physical death, but you will be spared from the second death because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Have a great day.